we have to see a return game of Le leaders. It's a second game in which, yeah, I believe it's Nikolai Bortnik uh, from Ukraine, and the leader is Sergei Zhigalko, who just won the first game. Uh, well, finally, we are getting updated with the with the pairing. So, in fact, both of those players were in the lead with 12 and a half out of 14. So now Zhigalko is in the lead as he won the first game in this one. But still, Nikolai Bortnik tries to strike back, I believe. So, something, well, which reminds me of uh, either C3 Sicilian or, well, it might be, might be some French, but one then what the night is doing. Perhaps it's, it's, it comes from a C3 Sicilian, but it's a certainly a uh, uh, French structure, of blockade French, so to speak. Mm, well, white seem to have slightly better chances. A6, now bishop goes to, well, I don't know, actually, D3 or E2. Bishop E2. I don't quite like bishop e3 to be honest because after knight c4, possible knight c4, you might be forced to actually go back with the bishop. Because b2 is going to be handy and you, do want to, you don't want to give this bishop away. Yeah, but for some reason was not played. Rook c1. Once again, there is a possibility to play knight c4, but maybe to capture on e3 is not such a threat anymore because white's going to recapture with the knight. White's plan is very simple in this kind of positions, particularly for a blitz game. So just... Oh, well, that's something not very... not seen very often, like bishop takes c4 and, and played quite quickly, in fact. Oh, that's a bit surprising. Knight f4, knight b4. So white has all the control over d5 square. So knight will ha have to go back, but that's a bit of an achievement for black. So now black might have knight a5, knight b3 at some point, so a2, a3. But provoking a2, a3, on the other hand, uh, by a cost of 2 tampi, might be, well, <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what's that. d5, yeah, right in time, breaking through. d5, uh, well, it feels, feels like white gets a very unpleasant initiative. Rook c2, that was possible to play d6 intermediate. I'm not sure if it was not worth a try. Because now, well, on the other hand, if you capture d5, then knight, well, perhaps knight c captures d5. So, well, black is not inclined to, to, to capture d5 anyway. So something like h4 might really, yeah, h4, now perhaps forces black to, to actually take, take on d5. Still, it, well, doesn't change much the character of the position, but... I'd say, I'd say still, an inclusion of b5 and h4 favors black. So bishop c5, bishop c5, and then, uh, well, perhaps knight c5 is the move. Knight c5, yes. Feels like white, white should be better, but I'm not sure if, if he, perhaps he had to play, had to play d6 early on. Still d6 is of course a possibility. No, white keeps to keep keeps the tension. White keeps the tension. Prefers to not to define situation in the center himself. But now, well, black can take and play. Well, how about bishop? Bishop f5 to land on d3. Feels like being not a bad possibility. Bishop f5 and then bishop d3 covering the mm, well d5 so there will be no threats yeah bishop f5 rook on c2 is saying he has to do something so it's not b3 and then ni either knight d3 or bishop d3 knight d3 g4 oh uh, well and he just blundered knight e1 with a tempo though well that, that that's a that's a terrible blunder of course queen e2 and knight d3 back winning the whole rook and then no no it's not well it's still tricky though well, it's still tricky, so it's still, haha, <laughs> well, uh, still a fight, yeah, it's still a fight. It, it's an extra exchange for black, but it's still a huge fight here. Takes, queen h4. Mm. 
well, yeah, well, <laughs> I'd say Black was Black was lucky here. Yeah, he he had really uh, quite an awful position, uh, Gigalco, and then, well, the way White blundered was was a bit of too much. I mean, it's a blunder in the whole rook only one with a tempo. So Queen D one, no, but Black is fully in control now. Bishop two. Yeah, simply retreating bishop to g6 might be good enough. Bishop e4, intending to exchange one of the knights. Mm, seems there like there is no move. So now it's possible to, yeah, let's take the horsey on g2 and then, yeah, takes, takes. That's a right thing to do. And then rook e8 one of the rooks to e8 i would say to cover e7 one more time so will be there will be no fork well yeah king h8 once again to avoid uh, to avoid any possible forks so what's the material it's uh, exchange and the pawn for segeji galco and white's only hope is connected with uh, some ideas, uh, possibly some ideas against Black King, plus the fact that Chigalko has 14, 13, 12, 11 seconds. Uh, well, he takes practical decision to... Yeah, well, but, but now it's only two pawns. So he gave back, uh, back an exchange, he gets another pawn, well, at least he's able to... to oh, well... Well, queen e6, queen d4, and might have been might have been interesting to actually capture on e6, but why decide it either way? Uh, four. Well, let's h5, and then queen comes to g4 once again. Yeah, we have to say that Jigalko really been lucky at some point. See, so, mm, yeah, <laughs> black is still winning objectively, but it's. Once again, with white being so short of time. No, no, black being short of time, of course. Yeah, so nine seconds makes black's task a little bit harder. Mm, well, so white has to come up with some with some concept of disturbing black's king, possibly, and still not letting black to activate his pieces. Well, there is a positional threat of rook e7 well a4 is sort of a pass move because because you well i mean it kind of you're not really threatening anything and i'm not quite sure if it was wise it actually helps black in some way so queen here and rook b7 so a little bit well a little bit of improvement of uh of a placement of black's rooks uh, rook f3 queen f5 now white is practically not moving at all that the rook is not moving at least next black's move might be king g7 back mm, rook d7 yeah now if you capture b5 it's rook d2 it's rook d2 and mm, yeah there is no there is no move i am afraid after rook d7 because yeah queen b5 then it's rook d2 and mate on g4 is unavoidable Mm, yeah. Queen f2. Yeah, queen f2 and then rook d1 was played. I don't know, moment of hesitation, an interesting moment. Well, rook c1. <laughs> well, it feels like Jigalk at some point he, he moves those pieces randomly, but somehow lands them on a very good squares. I don't know how this could have happened. I mean, he doesn't look like a good blitz player from the way he moves pieces, but somehow he plays it very. I mean, the quality of the games is uh, pretty high in fact and moves and um, pawns are rushing into promotion square now he's he's ready to confiscate this one on b2 with a check then another check and then b3 now he's getting closer with the king i don't know why queen d5 yeah that's perhaps the technical decision f5 Pawn takes, queen f4, queen e4, no checks anymore, and mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's nothing can be done. So it's check, uh, queen e6, what's it? 
So how about, and now there is no check on h5, yeah. There is no check on h5 now. Queen g6 and white is forced to exchange queens. 